friends, welcome back to my channel for another weekly vlog. Today is actually Tuesday and it is 5.58 p.m. So if that's any indication as to how this week's vlog is going, yeah, that's where we're at. I also might have eaten a Verb energy bar at 5 p.m. It's like this big, you guys saw it in my last vlog, 90 calories but 65 milligrams of caffeine. Your girl was dragging and <laughs> Now I'm thinking it might have been a bad idea. We'll see. We'll see how it goes, but I wanted to welcome y'all to the vlog. First things first, yesterday I did film for you. I filmed a Sam's Club haul and a Target haul, so let's go ahead and dive right into those, shall we? All right, time for a little bit of a Sam's Club haul. I did go to Sam's this week. We needed to refill on a handful of things. Double A batteries. I got two containers of liquid egg whites because this is the thing we go through the most frequently and I'm just going to figure out how to make it all fit in the refrigerator because we go through this so much. This is literally the reason I go to Sam's Clubs to get liquid egg whites. Um, smoked salmon. This week I'm feeling, I'm feeling the avocado toast smoked salmon vibe for breakfast so I grabbed some smoked salmon. We needed more Zizol. That's an allergy pill. Um, Dynamic Duo Little Potato Company Potatoes. I love buying these at Sam's Club. The price cannot be beat. Um, you get so many. They last a really long time, and they are delicious. Um, and this inspired me to want to go and buy the stuff to make my meatloaf, which is not my meatloaf, the skinniest dish meatloaf, the meatloaf that I rave about. I think I'm going to make that later this week uh, because I have chicken planned for the next couple of days, but that meatloaf is really great to just make and then it lasts us like four or five days and it's amazing so I'll probably do that i got good old coffee this this was an impulse buy um fried pickle and ranch popcorn heck yes and only 150 calories for two cups not too bad at all um the yogurt selection today, I was really feeling, I, I have granola that I want to eat specifically with the key lime flavor, and I honestly was not sure if I would be able to find the key lime flavor at Target, and it's in here with two other flavors that I will eat. This is the Light and Fit yogurt. It comes with toasted coconut vanilla, strawberry cheesecake, and key lime pie, and 12 grams of protein. Again, the price just can't be beat when you buy the yogurt at Sam's Club. Let me flip this. Uh, and... Not that like during a reverse diet my calories aren't actually a big deal. I'm not looking for low cal, but they're only 80 calories a piece and 12 grams of protein and no fat, which means I can put my fat in elsewhere, which is awesome. So I got those. These are a must every time I go. Um, my berry selection today to go with the yogurts is blueberries and raspberries. The strawberries were looking a little iffy, so I just stuck with those. Um, another yogurt snack that I decided to pick up because, again, my calories and carbs are getting a little bit higher. So this is actually a great um, mid-afternoon snack, like a post-lunch dessert or something like that. The Clio bars, I love these things. Um, I was trying to get the mini ones, but my Sam's Club doesn't sell them anymore, which is a bummer. I never picked them up the one time I saw them, and now I can't find them, which is so sad. But um, 140 calories, 8 grams of protein. These are delicious. Vanilla is my favorite flavor, but strawberries are close second. Uh, refill on my husband's bars. I got Colby Jack cheese sticks, a must have in our house. And for some more protein and lighter calories, I also got the string cheese because these pack a great punch of like six grams of protein for only 50 calories. Uh, got that. And then to go with the avocado toast, I got more avocado cups. That's, that's the Sam's Club haul, ladies and gentlemen. All right, the Target portion of my haul is incredibly boring, but that's because I got most of my groceries at Sam's Club for the week, or I'm using stuff that I already have. Two dozen eggs, two different salad kits that I'm just going to throw a can of tuna in to make it really easy for high protein. Um, I got two onions for the meatloaf later this week. Two things of cheese. My husband's eating sandwiches. This is our favorite cheese from there. We just like to eat it like alone, just chop it up and eat an ounce of it. Really, really good. Yellow mustard. I did buy um, blueberry English muffins, and then for my avocado toast specifically, I bought the light English muffins. Not because they're light, but because they have fiber in them, which I'm really excited about. I bought one pound of lean ground beef and lean ground turkey for the meatloaf, lunch meat, 
Tonight I'm going to cook up a zucchini I have with the tomatoes and I'm actually going to do a kind of recreation slash using a different protein of a hungry uh, home chef meal that we had that we really enjoyed. Um, so I'm actually remembering that it had zucchini and tomatoes with the as the roasted vegetable side so I'm going to recreate that. I'm going to roast up some cauliflower and we got carrots. That's it. Super simple. Again. Next up, let's talk about today. I went and had a facial today, this evening, and I feel I feel fresh and clean. We leveled up my facial peel. I get chemical peels and LED light treatments and all the fun things, and my skin has been looking on point lately. And so finally, after literally, I think I've been seeing her for a year now, uh, a year, the facials are paying off and the um, nutrition, obviously, the reverse diet nutrition is helping tremendously with hormone balance, which is helping with my skin. So all in all, all of the elements, my skin is actually looking pretty good. Not perfect, but it's never going to be perfect. Skin has texture, skin has marks, I have scars, all those things. Um, but I'm feeling really, really good about it. Um, I'm a little bit jazzed, a little bit caffeinated for 5 p.m. Uh, but welcome to the vlog. I'm happy you're here. I do have to give a quick shout out to Reverse Diet Life because I've been so healthy on track today that I am way behind in calories and carbs. Well, not anymore. I had snacks. But at one point, I had breakfast, lunch, and dinner tracked and still had 860 calories left. So your girl needed some carbs. So shout out to the 90-second whole grain brown rice because I made some rice through a, there's 70 grams of rice on my plate right now put a little bit of the um, the Good & Gather red pesto. That is what this is made out of. This is chicken, and I tried to recreate the topping from that Home Chef meatloaf meal that my husband and I really, really enjoyed. It was turkey meatloaf with the red pesto thing, so the sauce is actually red pesto, mayonnaise, and grated Parmesan cheese spread on there and cooked. Um, so I put a little bit of red pesto in the rice and then sprinkled the veggies and the rice with Parmesan cheese to add a little bit more heft and, of course, a little bit more flavor. All right, friends, I promised you an updated tending list with each weekly video. So this is filled out for the progress that I made from last week. Um, so as you saw, some of it was actually filled in at the beginning of the week. We filled it out together, and then some of it has been filled in since then. So here is where everything is as it stands right now. Um, singing at church. Oh, I can fill that one in. I made the team officially. Yay! I should tell you guys that story. I should tell you all that story. So let me fill that in. Okay, and apparently I can't do it with one hand. Hang on. There we go. Filling it in. Check. I got a check. I can't write today. Check. That's a check. That's done. Be more inspired. I mean, I'm about halfway there. We're getting there, y'all. Um, coaching coursework. I have not done, I have not done that. I'm starting to say goodbye to expired things. I think I filled that in a little bit. Last week, the Every Tuesday course module did not happen. Broadway soundtrack happened multiple times. Walk Outside didn't happen, but Peloton did. And Lifting Heavy Things did. And here is where my um, daily action items stand as of right now. And actually, what I'm going to do in real time right now is work on my every Tuesday stuff right now. So this one is the course that I need to work on. And so I'm going to do one of those right now, and then I will do one later in the week to make up for the fact that I didn't do it last week. So that's where the tending list stands as of right now. I'm going to go draw a pretty picture. Here you go. Here's proof. Proof that I did it. I did the first blueberry project. There's many projects to go, but at least I did something. Hello and happy Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just sitting here. It is 12.41 p.m. debating what I want for lunch, um, but I wanted to give you a little bit of updates on a couple of things as I have been really stellar at filming clips for my weekly vlogs. I gotta get better. I will get better, I promise. Um, it's a learning curve, and you, gotta, you wanna know the truth? You wanna, you wanna know the truth? My husband has been working from home for a year and a half, since March 2020, and um, I still get like self-conscious about vlogging when I know he can hear me. Door's closed, right? He's downstairs having lunch. What is that about? Like, 
He literally knows I run a YouTube channel and encourages growing and creating content for this YouTube channel and I'm still self-conscious about vlogging around him. What is that about? I don't know. But I haven't gotten over it in a year and a half, so I, I have no guarantees that I will get over it. Um, but I'm trying. I need to, I like this vlogging, making sure I have a vlog every week, so I, I'm working on it. I swear. There's just some self-confidence issues that are just holding me back. And I'm in, I'm in the headspace now where like I'm trying to just kind of artificially boost self-confidence and self-esteem. I'm doing all sorts of things to work on myself. And one of the things that like really truly needs to happen is I need to start acting with the confidence that I want to be having at all times. You know what I'm saying? And like I, so I need to I need to put myself out there and do all the things and I'm good at putting myself out there. Like you guys know me. I actually had a little bit of a Diva and the Divine Identity crisis like last week while I was in the middle of my brainstorming week. You guys were there. You saw it if you were on Instagram or you were on even YouTube. I posted in the YouTube community about it, about how I'm like I'm struggling now that like and I have been struggling with my channel because lack of Weight Watchers content has resulted in lack of engagement and now I'm not even trying to lose weight and like just having an identity crisis of like what is Diva and the Divine on YouTube anyway and one of the things that you guys said I asked you for all of your opinions and a lot of you celebrated my boldness and my my um my matter of factness. I don't sugarcoat stuff. I give it to you straight and I'm um, relatable and not in the Rachel Hollis kind of way, y'all. Um, and what was the other word? What was the other word? I, I don't remember what the other word was. But basically, you all gave me the feedback that's like, actually, no, we like the way you are. Please keep sharing your realness and your authenticity. That was the word. So that is what I'm going to continue to do, ladies and gentlemen, regardless of where I'm at in my wellness journey. That being said, um, there are some very exciting things happening in my wellness journey. First, if you are new here, hello, my name is Brianna. I am the diva behind Diva and the Divine, and I am glad you are here. If you are a returning subscriber or someone who hasn't been hanging out with me lately, let me fill you in. I am on a reverse diet. I'm currently eating 2,100 calories a day, 2,115 to be exact, but when am I ever exact about how many calories I eat? Never. Um, and my macros, I'm, I'm hanging out at 140 calories, 140 protein what 140 protein and almost 200 carbs a day y'all 200 carbs a day and let me tell you let me tell you about what a little bit what's happened lately as of late and like I, I'm, I'm started to call it on instagram reverse diet magic because there are so many things and i've talked about the emotional implications and the emotional struggles that happen with a reverse diet especially when if you're like me you've spent the last decade plus of your life in weight loss weight watchers mindset and it is hard to make that change when you have spent over a decade of your life in this very particular low-cal, restrictive, sugar, bad, fat, bad mindset to only discover that actually none of that is true. You can eat a lot more food and still be successful, but you have to spend life in maintenance mode, not chronically in weight loss mode, which is what so many of us have done in the past or are continuing to do. All of that to say, I'm currently eating 2,100 calories, which was my proposed maintenance when I did a reverse diet that was not coach-led. I landed at 2,100 calories as my maintenance. My coach is going to push me further and see if we can get me a couple hundred calories more than that, maybe 22, 2,300. How awesome would that be? Uh, but just this week, y'all, yesterday I had, so this week, today's Wednesday, Monday is when I started eating 2,100. Yesterday, Tuesday, I lifted so hard. I had leg day, it's week seven of lift four, which means the week gets kind of jacked up. And it was a heavy lifting leg day that has always kicked my butt and I killed it, I nailed it. I even used my barbell set and put 10 pound plates on that sucker for a couple of the moves. I felt like a weight lifting goddess, ladies and gentlemen, and it was awesome. And then you know what happens? I'm sitting downstairs on the couch, my husband's upstairs, and he calls out, he's like, hey skinny, 
I'm like, I'm sorry, are you talking to me? Because I am many things. Voluptuous, sexy, yes. Skinny, no. And he goes, I don't know. I don't know if it's the way you're sitting or your shirt or your muscles, but your shoulders, your upper half, you're looking skinny to me today. And I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll take that. I will take the win. Um, and because uh, disclaimer, the goal here is not skinny. Do I have some weight that I still want to lose? Yes, absolutely. I would love to be down about 20, 25 pounds on the scale, but right now that's not in the cards for me. That is not my current health journey's goal. My current health journey's goal is to get up to maintenance, reverse diet, eat more food, maintain my weight, and heal my metabolism. Because the last time I did an effort of weight loss, I it, it failed. It was awful. It did not work at 1600 calories. I should have been losing weight like this at 1600 calories, and alas, I was not, which only means one thing, my metabolism has since adapted and I needed to fix that. So that is what I'm doing right now. And so, so the, just the goal is healthy. The goal is healthy. And, but the compliment was very, very nice because he doesn't say things that he's not sincere about. He will tell me like it is. Um, so that was nice to see. And then this morning, y'all, this morning I get up and I look in the mirror. I check myself out in the mirror every single morning because, you know, body confidence. So I'm looking at myself being like, what's, what's going on today? How am I looking? All that jazz. And I was down a pound on the scale today not trying to lose weight, but I was down a pound on the scale. To be clear, that puts me only at down, I think, one pound from the beginning of my reverse diet. My weight has just literally been doing this. I've gotten about two and a half pounds below and also a pound and a half above. So basically, I'm trending out to evenly maintaining, which is entirely the goal. But my waist measurement, I had to check, even though I just measured on Sunday, my waist measurement clocked in one entire inch lower than it was on Sunday, which was four days ago. I don't know what that's about, but I'm here for it. So all of that to say, the reverse diet is going great and it feels really, really awesome. If you are somebody who is interested in a reverse diet, today is your lucky day because, or or nutrition coaching in general, today's your lucky day. I currently have, I'm working on an upcoming launch, doing all sorts of exciting things, but I currently have three, count them, one, two, three spots open for one-on-one -on -one coaching very excited about it and I wanted to offer them to you guys. I also have a new form of screening for this. I have an application, y'all. Um, so if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, serious inquiries only, there is a link down below to either the coaching website I have or to the actual application. Either one of those will get you to the application. You got to fill out the application and you got to be serious about it. But if you want to work with me, I have some clients that are doing some absolutely amazing things and I am going through coaching and a reverse diet in real time. So I don't, it's not just nutrition training. Literally, I know what's happening because I'm experiencing it in real time. So if that sounds interesting to you, the link to coaching will be down below. I would love to work with you. I think it would be a lot of fun. My clients are having a great, great time. I have one client who's down 20 pounds in two and a half months and um, killing it. I have two reverse diet clients who are doing so well. I can't, I can't even tell you. I'm so proud of them upping their calories, working through the tough stuff, the mental stuff, which is also the stuff that I have to work through. So I'm really good at coaching them because I have somebody coaching me through it. And so when I have the freakouts, the freakouts that they have, I've already had. So I know <laughs> work through it because um, I'm just a couple of weeks ahead of my clients in my reverse diet. And um, it's, it's so fun. It's so fun. So all in all, all of that to say, y'all, eating more food is really, really good for your body and exactly what it needs. And I know you're all here, or most of you are here for weight loss content. I promise you that is coming. It's coming, but it might not be coming until January. But lordy, lordy, when I start my next cut, it's gonna be awesome. Stick around for that. Um, I'm also pretty jazzed. I don't know why. Like, I'm I'm jazzed today, if you couldn't tell. No, I'm not over-caffeinated, but I do plan on having a verb bar after my lunch because I had one yesterday and it perked me up for the rest of the evening, which is the kind of energy I need today. So that's my update for Wednesday. I have coaching calls that I need to do. I have a video I need to film outside of this one. Um, and I do have a couple of things that I wanna show you this week. I have a morning routine tote just you wait, y'all. It's game changing. Um, and there was something else I wanted to show you. And now I can't remember what it is. So time will tell. Keep on watching.
table's a little goofy, but it's the only thing I can make work where I'm at, which is sitting on the floor in my living room. Shout out to the home goods pillow behind me. We decorated our house a little bit. I can't remember if I showed you guys this, but we finally picked like a color scheme and decided to decorate un poco, just a little bit. And um, can you see, can you, do you see that up there? We actually like bought artwork and we decided on like a royal blue theme because the gray and the blue would actually translate into any home we had in the future. So we got that, we got a new Minky Couture blanket that's blue. Um, so we have just, just like a couple pops of color throughout the lower level of our house now, which is great. Anyway, I digress. I'm here to tell you about the new thing I have started doing, 110% inspired by Lakin over at Plan with Lakin. Shocker, she inspires me for a lot of things. Um, and that is a morning routine tote. Yeah, literally a morning routine tote. This is the Molly Ollie tote. It's actually a diaper tote, but um, apparently you can use it for planner stuff as well because a lot of planner people have this. It is a felt tote with like a waterproof inside. Um, really, really great, super, super cute. It's got a bunch of pockets all along the side and then it has it has this little zipper pouch here that actually has pen elastics in it. So all that to say, I have created a morning routine tote because here's why. So my morning routine, my book is downstairs. Everything else, all of my journals and my planners and my Bible and everything, all upstairs. Flaw in the plan. Your girl doesn't like to walk up and down stairs first thing in the morning unless she's feeling super energized. And when has that actually happened lately? I don't know. So what tends to happen is I either do one of two things. I either sit down in my recliner and poke at my phone and have my coffee and read some of my book, or I go upstairs with my coffee and I do some journaling and a Bible study and whatever, but never do the two actually meet anymore. And usually what happens is if I go upstairs, I get distracted by my by the fact that my computer is up there, my work is up there, and like I'll end up getting a message from a client or something and then I'll automatically turn on work mode. Once I turn on work mode, all bets are off for the morning routine in general. So I've decided that in order to kind of keep everything all in one place and to minimize that work-related distraction of going up to my office to bring everything down here, and I was like, I, I've thought about this for a long time actually, but it wasn't until I saw Lakin's like tote that I was like, that is actually brilliant. So I now have a morning routine tote that contains all of the things I need to pull off my morning routine without even having to go upstairs. And it has just, this week, I've only started using it this week. I set it up this weekend. It came in the mail on Saturday and Monday morning, it's only been three days, but you better believe I have touched more of my morning routine in the last three days than I have in the last four months. No joke. So um, I thought I would show you what was in it. All right, so here is the tote itself. Like I said, it is the Molly Ali tote. I got it on Amazon. I will have everything linked for you. And I have it, because it's a diaper tote, it gets divided up really easily. So I have things in a couple of compartments. It's not totally full. I haven't solidified if this is actually what I want the entirety of my thing to be, but it's for what it is right now, it's perfect. First and foremost, in one of the side pockets, I do have a pen and a highlighter. These are my favorite pens right now. These are the Bic Gelosity. Hi, Gracie. Are you helping me? Are you going to help me? Oh, thank you. You're so helpful. Come here. Come here. You sit down. Come here. You sit down. Or get pets. That's fine, too. <laughs> get your face out of there. Um, the Bic Gelosity. I love this purple pen so much that I ordered an entire box of purple pens on Amazon. No joke. I think it's like 12 pens. Um, had to have it. I love this. I write with this all the time, unless it's like an official document that needs black ink. I'm writing in purple. And then this is just one of my mild liners um, that I use as a highlighter in my book. So those stay in one of the pockets here, like that. And then I have a couple of different sections happening. The book section is the current book club book, which is Believe It by Jamie Kern Lima, which, who is the founder of It Cosmetics. Really enjoying this book. I'm only this far in, but I'm loving her story so far, and I cannot wait to see where this book goes. Big fan. So the book goes in there. Then over here, we have the journal section. I do have a Start Today journal in there. These are by um, The Hollis Company, which I don't think is The Hollis Company <laughs> anymore. I don't actually know. Um, I don't use this every day. 
um, I should use it every day, and but I'm using it because I have it, and I saved this one. It says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, which is my favorite Bible verse, and um, I need to use it even though I'm not following Rachel Hall as much anymore. Um, and then my journal, my current journal is a softbound notebook from Erin Condren. This is literally like morning pages journal, all my thoughts go in here. And then I have my little faith section here, starting with my Val Marie paper prayer journal. I hauled this or sh shared it in another video, I think. Um, let me flip to the back here. But it gives you, it's a six month planner and it gives you different sections to, of things to write down to pray for. So basically you have more focused prayer time. I love that. So I keep that as a reminder in here for what I need to pray for. And then I have a Cultivate What Matters Write the Word journal in here. I have a um, She Reads Truth Bible study in here. I'm currently redoing the book of Acts because I never finished it. And then the latest addition to my... Um, morning routine is this Christian faith planner from Erin Condren, y'all. No joke. Um, I am planning on filming, actually, as soon as I'm done with this, I have to film a walkthrough of this book. And, um, but it's, it's really great. I've been enjoying using this the last couple of days. And I love that Erin Condren put out a piece of Christian planning material. I love that. So this is just a little simple thing that I'm doing, but I will actually show you where I hide it. For now, I just hide it right back here. Gracie. For now, I just hide it right back here behind the recliner. Nobody comes over, but we have this big space. It's like there's a big basket right there. My um, massage gun case is there and this empty space that doesn't get used. So currently, it's just going to house my little morning routine bin because I sit in this chair to do my morning routine. Happy Thursday. How about a tea haul, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, I did the thing I wasn't supposed to do and I ordered more tea, but hear me out. There was an epic sale, like really, really epic sale. I think I got $90 discount off of this box, which I paid, I think, $60 for. Um, Gracie, stop trying to eat the box, honey. Um, and it was just... It was an opportunity to just stash up on all of the things, so that's what I did. So I thought I would show you what I ordered. I can't even remember what I ordered. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, but let's jump right in. So we're starting with a chocolate chip cookie. Um, it sounded intriguing. I only ordered two ounces of it because I'm not sure if I'm going to like it, but it was worth trying for the price. To be clear, the... Loose Teas had a sale of buy two, get one free, and then there were a bunch of teas that were on really deep discount to begin with. So you could buy two deeply discounted teas and get one free or whatever, like the sale was insane, which is why um, a lot of these choices I made are all, actually I think all of these choices I made were discounted teas on top of the buy two, get one free. So chocolate chip cookie, power berry acai. Cherry Berry Punch. This is exciting. I'm excited about this. Oh my gosh. I'm excited about all of it, to be clear. Hibiscus Healer. I got this because the all my all-time favorite David's Tea is Hibiscus Splash. Hibiscus Splash was not on sale, but Hibiscus Healer was. Oh, look. I have so much faith in this that I bought two. <laughs> Another Power Berry Acai. Blueberry Fields Forever. So this one was actually in the summer subscription box, but I'm really enjoying it, which is why I got it, because it was on deep sale. Quit trying to eat the box, yo. What are you doing? What are you doing, you little stink? Huh? Oh, look, another hibiscus healer. Oh my gosh. How many of these did I get? And then I got this fresh and fruity um, sachets sachets, sachets, uh, individual tea bags. So it has five, four of each of the Caribbean Crush, frozen raspberry, green passion fruit, just peachy, which is another one of my favorites, and strawberry moringa. So I got that so I wouldn't always have to steep in my special little thing. This one is strawberries and cream. This one is rainbow lemonade. I don't, oh, this must be the free tea. I was like, I do not remember ordering rainbow lemonade lemonade. I had a free tea thing as well. So like I, I spent enough money where they were going to send free tea and this must be the free tea because I certainly didn't purchase this one. I'm sure it's great. Apples, pineapple, orange, 
raspberry, hibiscus, lemon, blackberry. Yeah, I'm sure this will taste great. I also got, I got it for the container, but also an entire container of Just Peachy was on sale. I love Just Peachy, especially in the summer. It is my favorite tea to make iced tea out of. So I got a whole new container of it. And of course the containers are reusable, which is nice. Another strawberries and cream and another cherry berry punch. So, so basically the goal is going to be to drink all of these teas before the fall and winter teas launch because I'm not supposed to have this much tea in the house. I got some drinking to do. Can we take a second and appreciate my bamboo plant that will not die? I got this when it was a lucky bamboo plant. I mean, I guess it really still is a lucky bamboo plant, um, but you know, like one of those ones with the stalks and then like the swirl, the single stalk, um, the stalk died. I got this in 2013. The stalk died. And in an effort to resurrect it, I cut off the leaf, like the little stem that was an offshoot of it. And just for kicks, just for kicks, I stuck that little offshoot, this little part right here in the container with rocks and some water. And I left it and it was like one or two leaves and then it started to sprout. And then we left for four months and I was like, well, it's going to be dead by the time we get back. Um, no, but, and like, look at these roots. These are all roots that this silly thing grew. Um, but, and it's got like a stem here, but here's the thing. Is the actual bamboo shoot ever, like the lucky bamboo shoot gonna come back or am I just growing a stem? Do I keep it? Do I keep, I'm gonna cut the roots down and like clean the clean the rocks and everything. Um, do I just keep it going and see how out of control this goofy thing gets? Because like right now, even though my actual bamboo shoot is probably not gonna come back. Like, I feel like this thing deserves a chance to live, even though it is a goofy little offshoot of the main lucky plant. How crazy is this? How crazy is this? It's the only real live plant we have in this house and it won't die. I'm very impressed with it. Tell me I'm not the only one that this has happened to. So I have my butcher box, right? And I have taken a pretty solid inventory of everything that was in there and I am positive positive. I even went back and checked video footage that there were four steaks, four steaks. For the life of me, I can only find two in the freezer. I can only find two. They're right here. See, right here. I, I They came in a slat of four and I moved, I cut them up. So they were two and two. I don't remember ever making other ones. I, I feel like I would recall if I had made sirloin steaks because I would have grilled them and it would have been epic and I could only find the two of them. I literally emptied out the freezer row by row to look for the other two steaks and I cannot find them. So just to make sure that I'm not out of my freaking mind, I'm like, did I defrost them and forget about them? I don't see them in the fridge either. Where did they go? All right, friends, so it's actually Monday now. And so I wanted to give you a little bit of a weekend recap before I wrapped up this weekly vlog for you. Um, over the weekend, we have basically, Saturday was date, date night, and um, we went out to dinner, which was, like it, it sounds like oh date night and you went out to dinner we don't go out to dinner like we went to a restaurant <laughs> this is the second time we've been to a restaurant since the pandemic happened started it's still happening started um and we went to this little local place in minneapolis called M M shoot now i don't remember the name what was it martinez i think it was martinez Martinez, I think is the name. And um, I wanted to tell you just briefly a little bit about my experience there. Not as a review of the restaurant. The food was very good. It was very unique. I enjoyed it very much. And, uh, but I wanted to tell you about what, like my eating and my mindset and everything. Um, so we ordered appetizers. We ordered a crispy Brussels sprout salad and we ordered beef tongue bruschetta. Yeah beef tongue bruschetta. I'm going to chalk that one up to the fact that my husband and I have been watching Top Chef together and he's feeling a little bit more adventurous lately, which I am 100% here for. I am here for some unique eats every once in a while. So we ordered beef tongue bruschetta just to try it. And turns out the, the collective dish, the bread aioli topping beef tongue, 
very, very good. Very good. But the out of character thing for me was I ordered a pasta dish. I literally ordered something with no primary protein source on the plate. And the reason why was several fold. One, the proteins, like they, they only had like five protein dishes and it was like chicken, pork, a steak, and a salmon dish. And maybe there was one other, I can't remember. But those are all things I make at home. Those are all things I make at home, and the descriptor didn't give me, lend me to believe that there was anything special about them, right? So I was like, let, if I'm here at this unique restaurant, I want to try something unique and different. And so I found on their pasta listing, chevre ravioli. Chevre, for those of you that don't know, is goat cheese. Goat cheese ravioli with pistachio pesto and topped with pistachios. I love all of those things. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to try it. So... I guilt-free ordered appetizers and a pasta dish and knowing we were going to be going out for ice cream afterwards. And I just got to tell you a little bit about the mindset around that because normally, especially when I'm trying to track my macros and my calories, the fact that there was no nutrition information to speak of anywhere, this is like a one, one location restaurant, like they, they don't have nutrition information. You go there just to eat and enjoy, right? Not to track your food. I didn't panic about it. I didn't even think about it. I didn't worry about the fact that I was going to have to put in macros that were above my macro goal for the day, like significantly above. I didn't worry about overdoing it. All I did was go into this meal with the intention of having a good time, enjoying some good food, and understanding that the next day I would be right back on track. It's not some crazy downward spiral where you blow one meal and you blow the entire weekend and then you blow the entire week. That didn't happen. And I'm, I'm not notorious for doing that, but I have been known to, especially if it's like a sweet indulgence, like if I get too many carbs, then it's hard for me to wean myself off the carbs. Now I'm eating freaking 200 carbs a day. And um, so that's that's not an issue for me anymore. But I just, I thought it was so interesting. Like I went into this without without question. I I skipped the alcoholic beverages because they were like $15. And my husband and I are like, if we want to drink, we can drink at home. No big. So we spent the money that we would have spent on drinks on appetizers instead. That was much more enjoyable for us. So I passed on alcohol. We had a vegetable-based appetizer, and then we had the the um, bruschetta was two pieces, one for him and one for me, so that worked out really great. And then I ate three quarters of my ravioli dish. But when I got to the end, my husband had one of the ravioli, and then I had three left over. And I was like, well, my option is to keep eating, and I totally could have kept kept eating. But I knew that we were going to go across the street to one of Minneapolis's acclaimed ice cream places, Sebastian Joe's. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take these three ravioli home and enjoy them later. Enjoy them tomorrow and save room so I don't feel overstuffed going to enjoy my ice cream. And, and so I put my fork down and decided I was done. And I took the three ravioli home. And then we walked across the street to get ice cream. And I didn't wonder what the calories were. I didn't, I, I it never even crossed my mind to be like, oh, I need to get something diet. No, I ordered one scoop, a single scoop, because if there's anything I know about ice cream parlors, especially ice cream parlors whose staff is entirely teenage boys, which this place was, they're like, I, I feel like I could have been the mother to some of the kids in there, honest to God. It was, it, it, it was kids running it, which was fine. Like, great summer job for them. Totally cool. Um, so these really sweet boys are very generous with the scoop, right? So I ordered a single scoop and a single scoop in ice cream, I guess. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if this is like your ice cream parlors at your places because this is what happens at the two ice cream places that we go to. Well, we only usually go to one. This is our second ice cream parlor experience, ice cream shop. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but like, you know how there's like the single serve cup? There's the one scoop cup. The one scoop doesn't go in the cup. They fill the cup up with ice cream and then they slap a scoop on top of it. That's your single scoop. So we had a very generous serving of ice cream. My husband and I each got a single scoop. He decided to bring half of his home. I decided that I, I don't like, I'm a, I'm a snob. I'm a total snob. If I get good ice cream shop ice cream, 
if it if it gets the chance to melt a little bit and then you refreeze it, the integrity of the ice cream I think is shot. So I just I ate all of my ice cream. And then when I got home, I just was, was like, I don't need to eat anything else. I was full, I was satisfied, I was fat and happy. And the next day I got up and it was right back on track. Easy peasy. The scale went up, yes, because I ate some pretty heavy food the night before. But it was a day of no like indulgence and a meal out, a date night out having exactly what I wanted, zero guilt, zero restriction, right back on track, no questions asked, and it felt so good. It felt so good. And the reason I'm telling you this is just because I want you to know that it's possible. If you are one of the people out there that is overly restrictive, struggling with weight loss, struggling to integrate your weight loss into your life, and you are, it's costing you social events and date nights and stress-free nights out, that doesn't have to be how it is for you. And I am, I'm discovering in real time the freedom, the freedom that maintenance will bring and is bringing. Like I'm at 2,100 calories. So like that's, that I don't know when maintenance is actually going to be. Could be somewhere around there. But like that's the freedom of maintenance. Go out and enjoy your day and then get right back on track tomorrow and it's fine. Heck, that's the freedom of weight loss if you're doing it right. Right? Um, so rest assured, there's hope. There's hope, my friends. Um, and on that note, I am going to sign off here. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. If you like this weekly vlog, there's more where that came from. So go ahead and hit that little red subscribe button. Join the Diva and the Divine community. And don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. And I've got weekly vlogs coming every Thursday all summer long. And I'm excited to continue to share what my time brings. So thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. And I'll see you next time.